Good morning, Flats Class YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. I'm excited about 2024. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff in this particular episode. But number one, Paramount. Uh, I had someone named, I'm just going to call them Bob, reach out to me and ask me what my thoughts were on applying scent to artificial lures to enhance their ability to catch fish. And this is what I told them. Let's sit down. All right, let's talk scent. You're probably wondering why I keep it in the refrigerator. Well, it makes it last longer and keeps the viscosity of the actual product, uh, the integrity of it, I should say, in good shape. Because many of us would just throw this in our tackle bag or the bottom of one of the lockers in the boat or leave it up on the helm or any of those situations or scenarios, I should say, and it will spoil faster. Remember, Procure is made from real, it's made from real bait. So this isn't an artificial product. You know, they, they do add what they call bite stimulants and amino acids, but I know these guys. Now, I don't get paid by these guys, but I know these guys. They make stuff for me. And they basically are the Bartles and James, I know I'm dating myself, of this this business like the wine cooler guys um, they squish this stuff up and render it down and it's made from real bait fish and and real crustaceans so it's the real deal now they do add some type of polymer to make this stuff super sticky in all the decades of fishing and using every gimmick i've ever seen advertised and I used to rep uh, or promote, was a paid pro for Carolina Lunker Sauce in the days. I have never seen anything like this product that stays with the lure for the longest period of time. And there's nothing close. I've tried every one of them. Nothing close. Now, am I a bait scent proponent for every day of the year? Absolutely not. But this time of year late December, January, February, sometimes if the winter in Florida is cold enough, it will spill all the way into March. But when you have those water temps, in particular water temps that are below 62, 61, 60 degrees, this is a huge advantage because the fish here, they don't want to move around a lot. So having scent to make the lure appear more natural because you're moving it so slow. I mean slow. Sometimes even dead sticking. For those of you that don't know what dead sticking is, that's where you just, you, you basically drop the lure into the pothole or into the trough near a oyster bar and you just let it sit there. You count, you, you look at your second hand on your watch. You let a minute go by, then you bump it up. Let it fall again. Let it sit there, this time maybe 30 seconds. Crawl it a little bit. Let it sit there. Wait another minute, then pick it up. When you're doing techniques like that, post cold front, this stuff, well, it's pretty amazing. Really is the real deal. Now, other than it being super sticky and super strong smelling and have all those, those basic uh, appeal factors. Here's some other things that you've got to keep um, in mind. It does not have the drawing power. What I mean by drawing power, pulling fish from 100 feet away. It's not like we're dumping chum in the water. We got half a dead barracuda in the water or a mullet and it's going to pull feet fish like sharks. It's not going to do that. Um, if you want it to have more drawing power, and you're using it on a warm-up period where your water temps might be closer to mid 60s pushing 70 
then I would make repeated casts through the same area closer together. So just keep casting closer together, okay? By doing that with this scent on there, it will create almost like a, an aroma trail, if you will, and it will have some drawing power that way. But most of the time, unlike gulp, this stuff is not really built to catch fish like, like a dead stick bait all the time. You can fish the baits that have the action, the paddle tails. Uh, if you wanted to put uh, like a Z-Man Easy Shrimp under a popping cork, it works. Um, for me, probably the biggest advantage is when a fish comes up and strikes the lure, if it has Procure on it, they'll hold on to it. I mean, and they'll hold on to it because so many of my presentations this time of year, whether they be, you know, jerk baits or, 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 or popping a shrimp and let it hit the bottom, lots of you guys are Little John fans, is the fact that it's pop, pop, let it fall, and it's on slack line. That slack line presentation, you got to be watching that line. But this gives you that little something, something that lets them hold the bait a little bit longer. So on those super slow presentations or where you're on slack line, this really excels. Now I'm going to show you a trick. Let me, let me grab this Ziploc bag. I'm going to show you a trick. Okay, I bent down and instead of picking up that Ziploc bag, I just picked up the entire... I'm cleaning my shop right now. A lot of people say, oh, this shop looks pretty good, but it is not. It is very disorganized. Uh, I have been working on this mess for three days now and honestly hopefully today I'll get something close to being done uh, I had to shut the garage door so hopefully the sound in here isn't too boomy now um, I've got a neighbor getting a brand new septic field so the uh, the tractors over there making a lot of backup noises so instead of the ziploc bag i just decided to get the entire bag of, of z-man these are the finesse trds this is a bait that i would commonly use a scent like this one okay and what i like to do instead of having to apply this every time to the lure so if if i'm going to fish this bait and I'm gonna to have to sit there and put drops on it and manipulate it or whatever every time. It's gonna take not only time, but it's gonna be messy. I'm gonna to have to pull that bottle and open this nozzle like 15 times, and I'm gonna be wiping the stuff on my pants and everything else. It's just not as, I'm gonna say, user-friendly that way. So what I like to do, especially with some of the Z-Man bags, all of them, first of all, are sealed bags. So you can reuse them. Some of them have clamshells now and some of them don't. But when I know I'm going to use a certain number of, of baits, this happens to be the California Craw color. It's got, it's a really cool color because it's, it's like a green pumpkin, but it's got a lot of the, the red flake in it and the belly is a little bit softer. Um, so it's a, it's a really cool bait. And I, I fish them often on these, anything from, one-fifth of an ounce to one-tenth of an ounce uh, mushroom. These are the finesse mushrooms. So it's a fine wire hook. It's a slack line presentation. I throw it into potholes. Sometimes I sight fish them, but many times I'm fishing this bait where I know there's a deeper trough or I know there's a hole up next to the mangroves and I'm trying to stay a full cast off. Now I'm casting this stuff on rods that are designed to throw net rigs where you can make a long cast. But I've got to watch that line because remember, I told you, lots of times I'll let it sit 30 to 60 seconds before I move it again. And when you go to move it, sometimes there's fish there and you just come tight. But they're holding on to it because of this scent. So here's a trick I do. I open, I put a certain number in there, okay? And then I'll take the bait scent and I'll just put like about the equivalent of two to three drops in there. But this stuff comes out like a goo. You see how it's gooey because I keep the viscosity? That's what keeps it on your bait. If, if I had a runny scent, it would just run in the bag and go down to the bottom of the bag. And sure, it would marinate the bait a little bit, but it would never last the way this stuff. 
And this stuff will cover all baits. I've got like eight baits in this bag because I'm going to fish this this uh, this week. We're going to do some fishing in Pasco County, um, fishing potholes. And then I just need this entire thing in the bag where I just knead it all up and I get it on all the pieces just by putting a little bit in there. It's, it gets on every one of them. Then it's not messy. It's in here. When I pull a bait out, I will rig it on a hook. Oftentimes I've got my gloves on this time of year. I'll rig it on a hook and I'm set. And lots of times I do this while I'm waiting on clients to show up. So it works perfect. Has a little time to marinate, if you will. And then when we get out there, I can then try and teach them to fish slow because that's what this whole thing is about. If you want scent to work for you, you must fish slow. So this is a great wintertime tip. If you were to ask me what my honest feelings are uh, about using scent, this would be the time of year to use it. Absolutely, bar none, if you're going to experiment with scent, this is the time of year you want to start using this stuff. Um, the fish are concentrated, they're balled up, they sit in deeper holes, or if you're fortunate enough on the warm-ups, they get in potholes, the water's clean and clear, you can see them. I fish a lot of super long leaders this time of year. So every advantage that I can find to, to catch fish is what I do. All right, most of you know, and I'm gonna be talking about this a lot in 2024, because it needs to be said, is about catch and release. And here's what I've got to say about that. In 2024, uh, it's never been more important for us to take care of the fisheries. Support organizations like Captains for Clean Water, uh, like Release Over 20, which I'm a huge fan of, of this particular brand right here. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep our fisheries healthy with better water quality and better stewardship from guys like me and you. It starts with you. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm completely against harvesting fish? No, I'm not completely against. I'm just of the, I guess, of the thought process that I only want to keep absolutely what I would want to take once in a while for a meal when I knew I was going to have, okay, well, we're going to do a fish fry on Saturday. So maybe I'll keep two or three fish. But when you see people taking fish every time they go and just unbelievable amounts out of the fishery and they wonder why they're not catching as much as they used to two years ago, four years ago, 10 years ago, it's not as much the loss of habitat as it is the number of people, especially here in Florida where people are moving here um, by the droves now. You just can't keep those fish. And I'm going to tell you right now, our fishery management, they're gonna start shutting these things down where you're not even gonna be able to keep a fish at all. It's just gonna happen. They usually wait till it's too late, till it's almost collapsed, because that's their, you know, they're trying to protect the tourism here but it starts with you. So support groups like Release Over 20, Captains for Clean Water, CCA, Florida, brands like that because we need all of us. Now, I know some are gonna argue in the comments, oh, well, I know a guy that he kills, you know, his full limit every day, da, da, da. You're not gonna stop those guys. Their mentality is that. Um, but you can spread the word to make that practice unpopular. And that's the only way it changes. Because when you, the client, stop asking the guide to keep fish, that's how we fix that problem. But there are plenty of us that want to eat a fish every once in a while, but would rather have the security or knowing that our future is secure, that not only we can still catch fish, um, and they'll be readily available, but our kids and our grandkids can. So take that to heart. Remember, one 20 inch trout, that's why we talk about release over 20 so much. One 20 inch trout releases millions upon millions of eggs 
every spawning season. And the more of them that are out there, the more fish we have to catch. I mean, we're all in this sport spending tons of money to ultimately catch fish. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have, do me a favor, like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't done it already because we drop a video here each and every day. I'm looking around, I'm gonna have to get back to cleaning this shop up.